Um, I had right now. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Okay, okay. Um, thank you for the welcome. And then to everyone who is here. So I'll start right away. I've just joined, had we had the opening prayer. So that I can just start right now. Hello. Okay. Are you hearing me? Hello. I I think network is disturbing our sister Vanessa. Vanessa. Are you? Okay. We are going into our worship, our worship time. Let us first oh. have ourselves for a word of prayer. King of all glory, bless your holy name. We worship you for this evening. We thank that you've brought us together in this place. Jehovah Jireh, come and reign. Come and use us as your broken vessels. Take full control. May you increase as we completely decrease, and may you appear as we disappear. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Lord, make me great. Lord, make me great. Lord, Ah, 
Tinsobora kubigamba, tinsobora kubigamba, akozire bya mahano, tinsobora kubigamba, akozire bya mahano, Yesu ametenda, ametenda majabu, nani siwezi kuweleza. Siwezi kueleza, siwezi kueleza, amete na majabu, nani siwezi kueleza, amete na majabu. Yes, Lord, you have done great and mighty things, Lord. There is nothing we can give in return for what you've done for us. Abba Father, Lord, this evening we commit it unto your holy hands, Jehovah Jireh. We commit unto you our speaker this evening, Father Lord. May you fill her King of all glory with your Holy Spirit. May you be there to use her, Abba Father Lord, Almighty and everlasting God. I also commit unto you all the ministers who are going to take part in this fellowship, Jehovah Jireh. May you be with them, King of all glory. Use them as your broken vessels, Lord, so that the glory shall always be on you. Your name Abba Father, use us, Lord, guide us in Jesus' name. We do pray and believe. Amen. So, I think I'm just going to come and introduce our speaker and the very Mrs. Jacqueline Mrs. Jacqueline Muringwa. Hello, ladies. Good evening. You are welcome to Women Connect. I hope my internet is clear. You are all welcome. Please continue sending the message to your friends, to your sisters, to your workmates, to any lady in your life. Don't allow them to miss. This evening, we are privileged to have our very own sister, Irene Kitui, and um, she'll be sharing with us about leisure, God's way. Can you have leisure when you are Christian? I know her as a as God's girl. I know her as someone who loves the Lord, who wants to know him more than she did yesterday, and who wants to let others know who Jesus is. So this evening we are privileged to have Irene. I um, have closely worked with her and I know her as someone who loves the Lord with all her heart. Irene, you are welcome to share with us. We are all expectant. We pray that God will use you as you teach us how to have leisure God's way. Kindly take the mic and share with us what God has put on your heart. Thank you. Thank you very much, Auntie Jackie. Wow, I like the introduction. It's uh, beautiful. I'm going to try to put my camera 
on. I'm not sure whether uh, the light in my room uh, is really enough uh, for, that's how I look like. Um, I have friends who have been asking me, I think some, the last time they saw me, they had, I had hair. And now they see a poster and I really don't have hair. And they're like, oh, Irene, you've changed. So that's how I look like. But I'm going to request to switch off the camera so that I can have uh, the concentration of the internet just on um, audio. But that's how I look like. And you're most welcome. And hope this will be a great discussion. One of the things that I wanted to be as I was growing up was to be a teacher. And, um, well, I didn't pursue that. Something happened in life and I changed. But I spent one year in a teaching school, my career trying to be a teacher, though I, I wasn't a teacher. But one thing that I remember being taught by the professor was, if you're having a discussion, make it participatory so that uh, everyone gets involved and gets started. So with... For me to get to get you involved, I want us to use our chat room uh, so much. Uh, therefore, my first question is, I want us to introduce ourselves. And I'm going to introduce myself with one letter from my name that I want people to know about me or something that I am striving to be every day. My name is Irene Kitui, and I'm going to pick the K from my letter. And the K means kind. I'm trying every day to be kind. So let's go to the chat room. Which letter would you pick? Jackie Melindra, which letter would you pick that would describe what you want to be? Denise wants to be daring. Okay, let's get going. I need to see more people uh, typing. Reverend Lydia, which one would you choose? Hope you don't choose K. And we have kind together. Abaho, uh, what would you choose? Uh, I'm not seeing anyone in the chat room. Prim is proper. Wow. Claire is caring. That's beautiful. Anyone else? Anyone else? Loving. I didn't see, Carol, I didn't see an L. Priscilla is prayerful. Good, beautiful. Those are the things that we want people to know about us. And thank you very much for participating and making sure. So the others, I'm still waiting. We can keep uh, posting. Uh, there's one who has put uh, Jesus like, wow, Auntie Jackie, that was a winner. Uh, who else did I miss? I saw quite a number. Loving. Woo, Reverend Lydia, that's nice. Super organized. Wow. Thank you. Faithful. We have merciful, prayerful. Thank you very much. This is servant, uh, kind, caring, beautiful. Great. Thank you so much. This is so beautiful to know. Um, I'm going to request the my host who is sharing to allow me share, stop sharing so that I can be able to share my presentation. But as we go ahead, I want us to start imagining again. When we talk about, when we say leisure, what comes to your mind? Can we uh, spend leisure time as Christians? So I want us to use the chat room again. Just help me define what is leisure to you. The chat room again, I'm waiting. Ledger is relaxing. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Any other person? When we talk about leisure, what comes to your mind? Having fun, having a good time. The teacher is tough. Okay. Free time. Which teacher is tough? I'm wondering. My free time off doing anything else. Leisure is resting, relaxing, chilling with the big girls. Wow, that's beautiful. Ah, John, this is the winner. I think I should be taking that as our definition uh, for today. Uh, just a minute. I'm not sure why I'm getting challenges with uh, 
with my sharing, but thank you for the definition of leisure and all of you, what you have shared. Yes, truly, that is the definition of leisure. There's no one who is wrong. We have got it right. And that is going to take us through our discussion today. Now, yes, when I was told my theme is leisure the godly way, I gave myself the responsibility of meeting the ladies that I had an opportunity to meet and asked them what leisure is. So what's the definition that some of you have shared is leisure is relaxing, sitting, chilling with the big girls. I think there's a picture of chilling with the big girls there and having all these different things. But then when we come to the definition of leisure, leisure is defined differently by different people. And according to the dictionary or Google definition, leisure is defined as quality of free time, that quality of experience of free time that we have. It's free time spent away from work, from business, from house chores, from education, from everything that keeps you busy. That is leisure time. And leisure is an experience that emphasizes freedom and choice. We choose to be whatever kind of leisure that we are going to have. Now, one of the things that I want us to look at leisure again is looking at leisure the godly way. Auntie Jackie, when she introduced me, she said, as a Christian, can we have leisure time? And I know in my research, in my asking the questions, how do you spend your leisure time? And the answers I got is what is going to define this discussion. Sometimes we feel like uh, we're not allowed to have leisure. Leisure is not for us Christians. It's for the other people out there. But I want us to know that God wants us to enjoy ourselves. When I found that, I was so happy and excited. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, 12 to 13 says, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. God is giving us a gift of enjoying ourselves. And during our leisure time, one of the things that we do in our leisure time is enjoying ourselves. Now, to other people, I found somebody who said, no, why should I have leisure as, as a young person now when time for retirement is coming? When I retire, that's when I will have my leisure time. And I said, why wait for the retirement when you're old and you cannot have fun and enjoy yourself, why postpone it to then and not enjoy it now? Therefore, leisure is not necessary for existence, but it's necessary for our well being. So you may think I don't need it, but for our well being, leisure is something that is very necessary. Therefore, my prayer is Lord, help me today to draw a boundary around work and time for leisure. And I pray that each of us who is tuned in today, that is our prayer for leisure that we need to have. Leisure as a rest. In Genesis, the first time we find rest, the first time we find leisure is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. And it says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all the work. Rest time is not waste time. It's time to gather and refresh our strength. So sometimes we think um, rest time is idle time. No, it's not idle. If we misuse it and take it as idle time, that's when we are going to have problems. But rest time is important. And even God rested. So now, in my research and findings, I see 
But God rested. It was a deliberate effort for God to rest. Because if we read Genesis and we look at the creation chapter, most of the things God was commanding, let there be light and light appeared. He wasn't, I think apart from creating man, that's where he used his hands himself. But the rest he was commanding and they were appearing. That means if he would get tired of working and so on, God wasn't tired by then. He would still have continued, but he made deliberate effort to make sure that he rests on the seventh day. What does that mean? Me and you need to find time to rest. And leisure is our rest time. Our prayer is, Lord, help me strike the right balance between work and rest. Help me to find the truth and rest time. So that is important for all of us. Now. The other thing is, oh, I can't move my slide. Sorry, I couldn't move my slide because there was a poll and I didn't answer it. So I think it affected my slides a bit. So the other thing we need to know about about leisure is that apart from it being our rest time, it's also something that we need to do as a discipline. Rest is a discipline that is needed. Rest is a discipline that all of us need to have. And how do we find this? When we read Mark chapter 6, verse 31, it says, then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Now here, Jesus was telling the disciples, I bet the disciples were working so hard to impress Jesus and helping the people who are coming and there's so many people who are coming. But Jesus saw and said, these people needed rest. And once they rested, they were refreshed. And that is a chapter where we find that they are feeding thousands. So rest is something that is important and all of us require it. And we need to make sure that when we have the rest, it's a discipline that we have within ourselves to make sure that we enjoy this rest. So let's enjoy rest as a discipline and not fail to have the rest. The other thing is leisure must draw us closer to God's presence. Leisure must draw us closer to God's presence. Leisure is crucial for our spiritual growth and development. I will just take this gentleman, Dali Connolly. Uh, he defines leisure as freedom from external and compulsive forces of life, such as work, in order to pursue personally pleasing activities that are not only worthwhile, but provide a basis of strengthening our faith. As you are taking your leisure time, is it drawing you closer to God? Back to Auntie Jackie's question. As a Christian, can we spend leisure? Yes, we can have our leisure time. Enjoy it to the fullest. Have fun with it. But let it help us draw us closer to God's presence. Now, one of the chapters that I looked at was Psalm 46. And I remember in uh, there's a watchman group I am on. And I think this was the psalm that we were given as a wake up psalm this morning. And that was Psalm 46. And verse 10 says, he says, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. Be still for me means rest. As I am resting, as I'm taking my leisure time to be still, in that moment, what am I doing that is drawing me closer to God? And my prayer is, Lord, help me 
use my rest time to really know you, search for you, yearn for you, take me deeper each and every day in my leisure time to know you and serve you much better. The other thing that we need to know that leisure, what do leisure are activities that we do? Different people enjoy themselves differently. One man's fun is another man's boredom. There are things I do, and even my family laughs that I do it. So it's fun to me, it's my leisure time to me, but it's not leisure time to another person. And even when I ask the different people that I met yesterday, and I was asking them about leisure, what do you do? How do you spend your leisure in a godly way? There were different answers. One, some spend it during sports activities, football, basketball, cricket, all those games. For them, that's their leisure time watching football, meeting different people as they watch football, or participate in the game themselves. Then there's entertainment, movies. I remember there is a sister who told me she's now spending time watching movies, but movies that tell stories of characters in the Bible. She has watched uh, one about Joseph, and she's looking for those characters, David, and those are the movies that she's watching. Television to others, I want to thank God that now in Uganda we have Christian television, so they play for us Christian uh, series, movies, and whatever we are watching is Christian life. But something else that I do personally when I'm watching TV, I watch the Animal Channel. And most of the time when I'm watching the Animal Channel, everyone walks away. But for me, is I am learning about these animals and I'm thinking, God, oh, why does that monkey look like that and doesn't look like this? God, eh? you are really great with your creation. There's so many different creatures and different characters. This time I was telling my family, do you know that not all snakes lay eggs? Others give birth normally by pushing the babies and the old didn't understand. And for me, it was like, wow, God. So television, how do you watch it and how does it help you glorify God? And then concerts. But for the entertainment, we need to be very careful and pray for it. Because there's entertainment, the movies we are watching, are they Christian-like movies? Or we're just watching movies that are pushing for the worldly agenda. So with entertainment, we need to be very keen. We need to be very careful. What are we choosing to watch? What are we feeding? our minds. And then there are people who go for gardening, people who go for walks, fishing, swimming, cycling. There are people who go for traveling. I love traveling. And when I'm traveling, I look at the nature and I'm like, God, you're wonderful. Your greatest designer. How do we have mountains? How do we, that is my leisure time. Um, Auntie Christine told me she likes going out with girls and then they have a cup of tea and they are laughing, they are hugging, they are talking. That is their leisure time. I don't know what your leisure time is. Sit in there. I want us to use the chat room again. Please tell me, how do you spend your leisure time? How do you spend, apart from what I have mentioned here, what are the other things that you do as you're spending your leisure time? And I will go through that. But one thing I want to say is, Lord, I thank you for the gift of leisure. Help me to enjoy it and not misuse it. Sometimes we have misused our leisure time and made it idle time. And once it turns to idle time, my friend reminded me, it becomes the workshop of the devil. Because you're idle. Leading, uh, reading Christian literature. I do handcraft, outing and picnics, beautiful. I love reading as well. And for me, yes, reading is something that also relaxes me. Please, let's use the chat room and just add whatever I have not put here. But we want to say thank God for the gift of leisure, no matter how we spend it. But help may the Lord help us to enjoy it and not misuse it. Now, what is the goal for leisure? The goal for leisure is not to enjoy the pleasures of the world, 
but is to enjoy God through his creation. Not enjoying the pleasures of the world, but enjoying God through his creation. Wow. How is God helping you in your crafting, handcraft, and enjoying that and thanking God for that? Much of our leisure time should be spent in activities that are for our spiritual well-being. As you're knitting, are you worshiping? Are you praising God? Are you thanking God? And all that. Now, there's this gentleman, Rafa. He says, guard your spare moments. They are like uncut diamonds. Discard them and their value will never be known. Improve them and they will become brighter gems in a useful life. Our leisure time is that. How are we using it? Are we discarding it? Or are we improving it? And that when we improve it, it will be useful in our lives. Prayer again, Lord, help me not to misuse my spare moments of life. Help me to use my leisure time profitably and not misuse it. Now, as we are going, as we are having leisure time, I want us to reflect and think on these questions. As we are going, how does a Christian spend their leisure time in a godly way? These are the things that I want us to ask ourselves. When I was reading this and coming up with these questions and looking at them, they reminded me one thing I am as well, the other thing that I do, I am a lotterian. And in lottery, we have the four way test. They ask us of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? So some of the questions here reminded me of that. Why do you want to do this? We need to be asking ourselves as we're going to do the leisure time. What, is, what, will, what purpose will it serve as I'm going for this leisure time? Will it build you or others up in Christ as we are going for that kachai, as we are chilling with the big girls, as we are doing that? Will it build you and others up in Christ? And we get this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 23. I'll ask somebody to put that in a chat so that we can be able to read that. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. Our leisure time must be vicious activity, and we must always guard ourselves against sin. We have a thin line, a very thin line between having leisure the godly way and going leisure that will not will lead us into sin easily it's a very thin line as we are partying and having fun and taking um our chikachai can it it can upgrade to something else and end up leading us to sin so we need to be very careful the other thing we want i want us to ask ourselves as we are going for this leisure time and that will separate us to have leisure the godly way is will it be of help or a hindrance in your work with god this leisure time is it going to help me or is it going to be a hindrance of my way and my work with god hebrews Chapter 12, verse 1 and 3. Still, I will ask somebody to put that scripture in the chat room as well so that we keep on reading and seeing them. Um, would it be that others would stumble because of that? And Romans 14 really explains that very well. What are the things that can cause people to stumble? Does it get you addicted? and cause you to lose control. Leisure time does not require you to be addicted and lose your control. Still back first Corinthians chapter six, verse 12. All that we do should be motivated by a desire to grow nearer to Christ. So every time we spend our leisure time, it should be to motivate us to desire 
to grow nearer, deeper in Christ. The other thing we need to ask ourselves, is it morally positive, neutral, or negative? Are we using our leisure time as a covering for our sin? First Peter chapter 2, verse 16. First Peter chapter 2, verse 16. Does it violate your conscience? What does your conscience say? And that is very clearly written in Romans 14, 23. Our leisure time must refresh us mentally, physically, and spiritually. If we forget anything today, let's just remember that our leisure time must refresh us mentally, physically, and spiritually. So as you think of your leisure time, just know that. And then finally, would you be happy to do this if Jesus was with you? As you're going for the kachai, would you be happy to do it with Jesus? As you are traveling, would you be happy if Jesus was with you? Or you'd first say, oh, Jesus, first wait, I correct myself here before. So your leisure time, would you be comfortable to do it with Jesus? First John chapter 2, verse 5 and 6 should be our scripture for that. Whatever we are doing, we need to glorify God. First Corinthians 10, verse 31. Our leisure must be to the glory of God. And thank you. I will wait for questions. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Irene. That was really, really beautiful. Ladies, I encourage you to send in your questions. Uh, I remember one time I was in the salon and there were these men who were cutting their hair. And then they asked, uh, an argument came about who, how people, how Christians spend their leisure time. So they, they came in and then they were telling us how if during their leisure time there is no alcohol and dancing and partying, that leisure time is wasted. It is not leisure time at all. So I told them, actually, you can enjoy your life. You can have leisure time with Jesus. You can have a blast just sitting away and listening to gospel music, reading the word of God, fellowshipping, you know, in quiet time, it's so refreshing. You just feel like you don't even want to get out of there. Oh, how on earth do you enjoy your life by just listening to gospel music, for instance? But you know, the relationship with Jesus is experiential. You can't you can't just begin telling someone, unless they have experienced it, is when they, they can actually know what you're meaning. But we can actually have fun in the Lord. We can have fun. We can we can we can have a good time. We can enjoy a leisure time as Christians. So I'll encourage us to send in questions. I don't know if some have come in. But we really, really appreciate the time you took to prepare and all the examples you've shared. Yes, along the way, I also learned how to watch those animals. One of my daughters loves Nat Geo Wild. So we sit and watch animals give birth. <laughs> and it's interesting the things God can do and how he helps his, these animals without the midwives. So it's interesting. Friends, 
I'm looking for questions in the chat. But in the meantime, um, I'll ask you, Irene, um, as a Christian, how can you convince someone that it's actually possible for you to, to have leisure as a Christian, to enjoy life without sinning? How have you found it when you're encouraging your friends who are not Christian, maybe who are half Christian, half not? They recently had someone preach and she said, you cannot say a fake pastor. Someone is either a pastor or they are not. There's nothing like a fake pastor. So there's nothing like a fake Christian. But you know, there are people who are not hot, not cold, they are lukewarm. And they want you to convince them and bring them on board and show them that you can actually enjoy life, life to the maximum as a Christian. You can have leisure time. How have you found it easy? If so, please let us know so that we can we can encourage our friends and know that they actually are missing out this side of the coin. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Aunt Jackie. And, and that is something very important. And I know many people are struggling with it, that we can enjoy leisure time the Christian way. Now, one of the things that happens uh, during leisure time, the non-Christian way, they only add alcohol most of the time and smoking and so on. But the activities, um, I'll give you an example. I love dancing. And um, my family knows that when there's music, I really wake up and dance. And I can dance. I love dancing. Um, before, now the Christian way is we now have gospel music songs that have a dance beat. So um, one of the things that I also love and enjoy, I enjoy doing so much is playing Kenyan gospel music, I, I will apologize, but it has a band, a beat, the message and so on. And the times I play for people that song and I'm busy dancing and people are dancing with me and they say, oh my God, can I banga And then I tell them it's a gospel song and they're like, are you sure? So there's that. There's one thing that we have not explored is which kind of music do we have that we can dance to and have fun with it. Um, the other thing is we take tea. Um, me and my friends love taking tea and reading the Bible and also sharing about the Christian books or books that we have been uh, reading about. And it's fun and we laugh. By the time we finish, we have had all the fun. So one of the things that I do sometimes is I introduce those people, find out what are those activities that they do, and I introduce them to them in a Christian way. If we go for football, how, what are we discussing? Uh, if we go for swimming, if we're going for that walk, sometimes they say, we are going for a walk, let's put in um, music. That is something that I have also started doing for my leisure time, walking for two things, for my leisure time, relaxation, but at the same time, I want to lose weight. So I'm doing the walking as well. So I introduce them to the activities that I do and bring in the Christian point of view, gospel music or fun, drinking soda, drinking tea, eating, and so on. And I find that people relax and say, hey, Neno, it's so fun. There's some time I had a party and um, invited my friends and there was a barbecue with Jewish uh, tea, overflowing tea. And they said, oh my God, this person said, I have never been to such a party where there's no alcohol and I have had fun. I have laughed. I have played Mata too. I have played Ludo. I have played Snakes and Ladders. So how do we just make the activities more fun so that our friends that are not Christians can enjoy? That is something that I have done and I have seen it working. Just bring it and encourage them but let's not break the rules and go on their side. Back to you, Auntie Jackie. 
Wow, thank you so much, Irene. And um, talking about breaking the rules, I think we also have to be cautious because the temptation is for us to, to think we're having leisure. We've got to look at things like our dress code. Um, does it stumble the people we have invited? Uh, does it, uh, if they found us having our leisure time, can they tell that uh, I am a Christian, Irina is a Christian, and maybe so and so is not, or they have not given their lives to Jesus. So I think it's also very important for us to maintain the moral standard. Yes, you're having fun, but if your picture is shared on, on social media, for instance, would people say, ah, is this the Irina I know? So, um, as Christians, I think we should also bear that in mind that we we have we are representing Christ. Whether we are having leisure time or not, we are representing Christ. So um, we don't have to move around with all our breasts out and thighs out. We dress decently. Yes, actually, you can dress decently and still go out and have your leisure time. So um I'm trying to look just in case I've missed any other question. Um, I haven't seen any other, but I thought I should ask you, Irene, how can, given our busy schedules and running around, you have told us you are now longer. So there's a lot of running around lately. If you're not visiting children, you're taking them to school. If you're not attending a wedding, it's a funeral. Basically, you look at, project your week ahead of you and you realize it is too hectic. And any free time you have that would have been your leisure time, you feel like maybe you want to take a nap and rest. That can also be a way of spending your leisure time. But how, how can you be intentional about making sure that you have a leisure time for you and for your family? How, how best can we manage our time well so that we, realize, we make sure we don't miss out on this leisure time because it's very important. Thank you very much, Auntie Jackie. I'll answer your question, but I also saw a question from... Uh, John, he says, how can you enjoy leisure time without over-spiritualizing it? Most Christian, Christians seem uptight and even choose to speak, to speak in tongues while talking to their spouses or potential spouses. This is fun. And I know uh, many Christians have been blamed um, about this. Um, I always like going back to Bible characters and their lives and how God blessed them differently, and even Jesus Christ. Uh, one of the things that we remember, the first miracle that was written that Jesus did, he turned water into wine. Where was he? He was at a party. Mm -hmm. And um, at this party, so what does it mean? Jesus also had rest time, but he had the opportunity to go at this party. If we read the scriptures of where Jesus was at the party, I don't remember reading anywhere that he was being very spiritual and saying spiritual things. He enjoyed himself at that party. So it doesn't mean that if I... How can my life be preaching? There's another thing is of us being speaking in tongues, but then our character is bad. You're speaking to me in tongues and being this very nice Christian, but you're screaming at the waiter because they have taken your order in a wrong way. So my 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 thought is let's enjoy leisure time because even Jesus rested, Jesus went to a party and at the party they don't tell us that he gave out Bibles or he gave teachings and he did different things at different times. When we are enjoying ourselves, let's enjoy ourselves. I love dancing and I, tell, I, I said that David danced, danced to the extent his wife was ashamed of him 
and said, look at him. How are you? How can the king be dancing like that? We can dance as well. But that's like Auntie Jackie said, how can we do it in a Christian way? Not be over pretending to be a Christian, but doing the right way. Trust me, if you are a Christian, people will define you as a Christian, not because of overdoing it. Just the simple things that you do each and every day. Now, um, Auntie Jackie, you mentioned it. We have to be intentional. Intentional, intentional, intentional in creating time as we have the leisure time. I have come to realize I am re reading a book. It's called Ikigai, uh, which is a Japanese word, and it's talking about living purpose. And one of the things that I'm intentional about in my life these days is how I structure my time. And I remember recently I was talking to somebody and they said, I renew time is structured. You have plots of time and I have my days. I can tell you this day I will not do this because this time I have this. Thursdays from six to seven or sometimes to eight, I'm in lottery. So nothing else comes and I will tell you that. Um, Monday to Friday, six to seven, I am in devotion. That's my time. But what, one, one of the things that I have done, I wake up at 5 a.m. and I manage my time. I have made it intentional. Now, 5 a.m., there's so many things I do. It Sometimes I wake up, pray. Uh, sometimes I do exercise between 5 to 6 so that by 6 I am attending the devotion. And then I have to get out at a certain time to go. Uh, to work and also drop my sister and drop my daughter sometimes to school. So I have made it intentional. We use excuses of I'm so busy, I'm so what, I'm so what. I'm. But even Jesus, even God rested. Who are you not to rest? How do we plan our time? And and I always tell ourselves, why do we pretend to be so busy and not plan our lives, yet God planned? He didn't create everything at a go. He went creating one by one. He planned. Let me put this, then then put this, then put this, and this, and this, and this, and the earth was there. Even as we can plan our lives. So my whole thing says we need to be intentional. Very, very intentional. We can we can choose that. And trust me, if you are strict on that, you create time. One of the things that I do Monday to Wednesday, I walk from 5.30 to 6.30 or sometimes 7. I walk around and I'm, sometimes I'm walking while listening to music or I'm walking while listening to a scripture or a teaching. So I create time. Please, let's create time. Being intentional to rest. But remember, when you rest, you refresh yourself. Hmm? The biggest problem why we don't rest because we have chosen our work to define who we are. So when our work is not being done, we think there's something about us that is gone. Let's not define ourselves by our work. Let's define ourselves by who we are. And work is something that we just do to fulfill our purpose. Thank you. And like we mentioned, yes, if you rest, you refresh yourself. If you work, 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 you collapse. There's a lot of stress. There are a lot of people falling and getting stressed and all that collapsing because we don't intentionally rest. And there's a book I read. I think it's Eat the Frog. It says you should have one day where you do nothing just resting. I've not reached there yet. I'm doing a few hours, but that's where I'm heading. Back to you, Aunt Jackie. Thank you so much, Irene. We thank God for loading you with lots of wisdom that you have shared with us tonight. I think our time is up, much as we'd want to push it on and on. We don't want to enter into family time. I'll hand over to Reverend Lydia. Um, 
to pray the concluding prayers and then to bless us. But thank you so, so much. May God fill you afresh from where you have taken to share with us. And may you be blessed immensely. Thank you. Your sister is not around. <laughs> My sister's other half can take over. Dr. Professor, kindly take over and put on the darling's shoes. Uh, let faith pray and then I'm going to pray to, to pray the concord of the benediction. Uh, faith, please pray. Faith, you can unmute. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Irene. You have really spoken to our heart this way. Lord, I have Father, we thank you very much for this message that we have had. And more so being challenged that if you, God, our Father, who created the whole world, with the oceans and mountains and all that is in, in the earth, you know, animals and humans, you manage to rest. Help us to rest, O oh God. Help us to, to prioritize our time. You know that we can do everything, but without rest, we can even lose everything. That you, Lord, when you rested, you did a great work. Help us to rest. Help us to have useful time because it is also good spiritually. It is good medically and psychologically. We thank you for this message that we have heard. And we pray that, Lord, you help us to apply. Just many times we learn so many things. We pray that we may uh, apply them. And this one, we, are, we pledge to apply this because we need to be useful in the kingdom when we are not people who are burnt out. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. And loving and gracious Father, we continue to thank you for this wonderful time that you've given to us to reflect on this important topic of leisure. Lord, we as Christians have been told that leisure is a way of worshiping, that through leisure, we can actually give glory and honor to your name. We can appreciate uh, the wonders and the works of your hands. We can look at creation and seeing that all creatures great and small. You are God, you made them all. Lord, we pray that you continue to give us ways in which we can be able to take time off, to plan our time, to enjoy our leisure. We see that you have created us to worship, you have created us to work, and you've given us time to play. But like it has been said, many of us have worshiped our work. And when it gets to work, we work at our play. And then uh, when we come to worship, we play during worship, and uh, which ends up being a misuse of what you have given us. But Lord, we come to you to say we are sorry. We pray that indeed as we get down to worship, we shall worship. As we get time to work, we shall work. But when it is time to rest, we shall take time to rest so that you can refresh us, so that you can re-energize us, so that you can refocus us, so that you can grow a greater vision within us. Lord, we pray that these your ladies will be able to continue to grow in every way, that they will continue to be able to bring you glory and honor in everything that you've asked them to do. We know that leisure is your own gift to us. And although people have corrupted it, we as Christians can show the world what it means to enjoy leisure in you. And so, Lord, touch us afresh and teach us how to enjoy you. And now, ladies, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you even as you continue to enjoy him and you continue to enjoy his works. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace, that peace that will allow you to rest in his embrace, that we, that peace that will allow you to be still and know that he is God. And the blessings of God Almighty, God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you, remain with you now and always.